All right, today I'm joined by Heidi Harris. She is the owner broker with Home Sweet Heidi Realty in Raleigh, North Carolina, also um, powered by, obviously, Berkshire Hathaway up there. And so one of the things I want to mention about this episode in specific, if you've had an excuse that you don't have an SOI, we're going to solve that problem. If you are wondering, how do I build my presence on social media? We're going to solve that problem. If you're at a place and you're wondering, how do I get put deals together when there's no inventory? Heidi's going to solve that problem. Stick with us and let's get to it. All right, Heidi. So this is really, I, I'm super excited for you to share with some of the things I told you offline that I have kind of almost been following you from afar for a long time and just admiring the way that you, um, that you really brand your business, you brand your, your, your team and just everything that you do. And so if somebody doesn't know you, can you tell them a little bit about yourself, where you are and the team makeup, if you don't mind? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm Heidi Harris. I'm from Raleigh, North Carolina. We service all of the Triangle. So that's like Durham, Chapel Hill, Raleigh, Wake Forest, Cary, and then probably like a hundred other cities that I'm forgetting about. Uh, but yeah, we uh, service that area. It's We have a team of five. I'm the team leader and then we have four others and we're all really, really good friends. So like they hang out without me sometimes and it hurts my feelings. <laughs> But um, yeah, we've got a really cool team dynamic. We're all high energy. We all really love our clients. We believe in doing the right thing. And we believe in making a lot of money and having a good time while doing it. Yeah. Um, and I think that it sets us apart in our industry. Yeah. Um, we do a lot on social media. We do a lot for our, our listings. So everything that we're doing, we're just like putting out so much love. And yeah. then naturally we're getting love back, which has been really yeah. Different. It is. I, I, I'm excited to share with everybody a little bit about, you know, the amount of business, average sales price, if you don't mind, that kind of things. Yeah. And also where you, when you started in the business, how long you've been in the business? Okay, great. So I've been in the business since 2012 mm -hmm. and I was a solo agent for more than half of that. Um, and our average, gosh, I did this a couple months ago. I think that our average price is like 325, 350 yeah. mm -hmm. in Wake County, which is the main County that we serve. It's 306 is the average. So we're just like a, a smidge above that. Yeah. Um, and last year we helped over a hundred families and I think we did like 37 million or 36 million or something like that. Oh, that's awesome. Incredible. Yeah. 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 Um, and so let's go back to when you started. So what got you into real estate? How did, how did that originally start? I'm going to be honest with you, Jimmy. So <laughs> I hope so. I know. Uh, yeah. My husband was right. Okay. I have to lead with that because I, no, I hate it when he's right. Okay. <laughs> and um, I was working, I was selling radio ads. And so I was literally selling air mm -hmm. and hoping that it worked. Yeah. And it's a very turn and burn job. I did it for seven years. I'd come home crying and I'm not an emotional person at all. I was just drained. Yeah. And, um, one night I was crying in bed and my husband was like, why don't you get your real estate license? And I got so mad at him. He's like, how dare you say that to me? That is so mean. I don't like realtors. You know, they're all used car salesmen. This is, you know, why would you even think to say that to me? And I remember turning around and just like crying into my pillow. And then I woke up the next day and I was like, I can be different. Mm. I can make money because I can switch the perception of what people think about realtors and actually service my clients and care about them and love them. When we bought the house that I was crying in, mm -hmm. um, our realtor called us one night and said, Hey, the appraisal came in low. And we we're like, Oh, so what do we do next? And she was like, I don't know. We'll figure it out. And she hung up the phone mm. and then we didn't get a hold of her for 48 hours. And it was just like, so to me, that's what realtors were was like, Hey, I'm just going to do the bare minimum. Right. We'll let you figure it out. And so I came in here with a chip on my shoulder mm, mm. and also nobody to sell to. Right. Um, I'm originally from a small town in Maryland called Westminster, Maryland. And I came down to North Carolina. I went to college at Barton College, which is a small college. Mm -hmm. And that's where I met my husband. I followed him here to Raleigh. He has like eight close friends. Mm -hmm. So that was my sphere of influence. It was like mm -hmm. that. And then like maybe a couple coworkers. So, um, but I didn't think about it. Nobody told me I, sh I should have known, 
like I take full responsibility. Shouldn't I? <laughs> but nobody told me like, Hey, do you have 50 people that might support you or, you know, whatever the rule is, I'm sure it's out there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, so I went in it like, just like blind bravery. And, um, I wrote notes to people and I was like, Hey, just want to let you know, this is what I'm doing. I got my real estate license. If you know anybody that can help, I'd love to help. Here's a business card. Um, you know, I saw on Facebook that your daughter got engaged. Congratulations. Or like, just like something, um, making it a little personal, but then also something about me. I did that. And then I wrote, um, notes to other realtors in other areas. So I'm in Raleigh. Charlotte is another big city. And so I went to Charlotte's websites of their top real estate companies. And I saw who the top producers were. And I wrote them letters and on the front, I wish I had it I'm gonna so use good. it on the front. It said, I love paying referral fees. Mm. And then you'd open it and it was, Hey, my name's Heidi Harris. I'm based in the triangle. If you ever have anybody moving that way, let me know. I'd love to pay your referral fee. Hope you have a great day. And I included two of my business cards mm. still today. I'm getting referrals from those people. Um, it cost me a postage stamp. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my sphere of influence supported me immediately. I got in, gosh, what year, how old was I? I don't know. I guess I was like 27 when mm -hmm. I got in. Um, and so people were like just buying their first houses and stuff. Yeah. So I think I, I was beginning to miss that first wave of people buying their first houses, but I caught the tail end and now people are buying their second houses, you know, starting their family, stuff like that. Um, but doing those things in the beginning. Yeah. It, yeah. See, set a different tone. This is what's awesome. I mean, a lot of people, um, you know, what I love is, is that a lot of people will use any excuse they can find. Well, I just don't know anybody here. I don't have a sphere of influence, but that was not what you did. I want to go back to this and talk about this from a standpoint, because this is such a great idea. Every single market in America has a feeder market. Um, some have multiple and some like us in the coast, I mean, yeah. these are people coming from everywhere into our market right now. So let's talk about that specifically. So let's really get tactical on this. So you went to the website. Let's start from, okay, I'm identifying Charlotte. Now, what was the next step? Okay, so the company that I used to work for was Allen T. Realtors. So immediately I went to the Allen T. Realtors in Charlotte. Right. Um, I started in January. So the, the list of top producers had just come out. So I found it on the website, boom, top producers. And then I went to Berkshire Hathaway boom, top producers, Keller Williams, boom, top producers. The finding them was not hard. Right. It was just trying to Google it. And look, if you can't find where the top producers are, or maybe you're watching this and it's not January, send it to anybody. Because yeah. just because you're, I mean, you could be a top producer and just be so overwhelmed that you get a piece of mail and you're like, that's cute and you throw it away. Right. You, know, you All you need is a call. So that's it can right. be, anyway, if you just want to go drill an office and just do it. I mean, it's the, it's a postage stamp. That is all it costs. Yeah. So what and was the first one? What did that first one look like? And you were like, wait a minute. I think I got something here. When was the first? I mean, you got to remember some of these. Oh, no. Th this story, you're going to think I made it up. So I am, um, there's a super successful realtor in town. His office was right next to my office. And I went in there defeated. Mm. Once again, I was crying. The person that doesn't cry was crying. <laughs> and I was like, hey, Van, um, how, how do you stay in this business? And he was like, well, what do you mean? I was like, I'm putting out so much energy. I'm not sleeping. I'm missing meals. I am hustling. I am working so hard and I don't have a commission check. Everything that I'm doing today isn't going to pay off for like years. What do I do? And he was like, exactly what you are doing. Like, this is what it's supposed to be like. This is what you're going to look back on one day and be like, this is the soil that like, brought wow. all of this produce out. He was like, exactly what you're doing right now is what most people don't do, which is why only what 13% of realtors, right. realtors make it. Um, so he was like, remember this moment as painful as it is, remember it. And mm -hmm. when you feel big, remember it when you feel little, remember it. And it's going to go far for you. And I was, now I think about it and I kind of get goosebumps because I'm like, dang, you know, what a magical moment. But in that moment, I was like, I just want you to feel bad for me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he knew because he knew it because he had done it. Um, so anyway, so that happened the next day, Jimmy, I got a phone call mm. and it was somebody that I wrote a letter to the referral letter. 
hey, I still remember it. Hey, my name's Tony. You sent me a card saying that you work in Raleigh. I've got a buddy. I just sold his house. It just went under contract this morning. He's going to be moving to a er uh, city right outside of Raleigh called Clayton. Here's the thing. He needs to look at houses tomorrow. I'm sure you're busy. Do you have time? I know. Yes. Let me see if I can organize my busy schedule of complaining. Right. right? And so I was like, Ooh, let me see what I can do. Uh -huh. And I showed him, I showed this guy one house. He bought it for cash. He closed in two weeks. Come on. It was my first closing I had. It was super easy. It was new construction. So there wasn't really too much right. to yell about. Um, it, uh. it validated that what I was doing finally worked. How many do you think you sent out total that first year? Probably not enough. Um, yeah. Because when I did it, you know, you're kind of hoping for immediate response. Right. You got to think when I send it out, I send that out in, in January. My first closing was in July. Yeah. yeah. So I probably sold it, sent out 50. That's it. Yeah, I did not. Yeah. Um, but I have still today, probably seven or eight of these people that we constantly pass stuff back and forth to um, oh. from that. And, and the, my very first closing, they just bought and sold a couple months ago. So it was like totally full circle. And it was yes. amazing. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'll say this. What would this have looked like if you'd done 500? You know what I mean? That's the thing we always, because we just don't think about it when we're doing it. We want to wait for results. But if you understand, so somebody that's listening to this right now, that's sitting there going, oh, I, you know, how did you did 50? She got one. Let me just say this. If you had done, I mean, why would you not? As long as you understand that it worked, you know, that's what we all do in our own business. But that's the beauty of like this. And this is why I appreciate you coming on so much, because now you're sharing something with somebody that I'll promise you somebody's going to text you in the next couple months or email you. And they're going to say, how do I listen to that? And I got my, I can't thank you enough. That's the value of us being, you know, helping each other so much in this business. I pray that you're right because Jimmy, I've told this story to so many people. I've never had one person say that they did it. So my challenge to whoever's watching this right now mm -hmm. is I challenge you to text me and give me your, um, your success story. It will, it will work. People, uh, how many times do you just get online? And you're like, Oh, I need a realtor in Charleston, South Carolina. You're just Googling somebody mm -hmm. like instead be proactive, send them your business card. I want to make sure that they make that a two person included on that text. Also, I want to be on that too. Um, Cause I'm a, I'm a Roger, I'm a Roger wave a little bit. So I appreciate this. So, so listen, <laughs> let's go back a little bit because listen, if you don't have an SOI, you've got to build your brand or you've got to build it where people begin to know you. Um, I, I know from your background, but talk a little bit about your background in college that prepared you and what you did with that to start working on social media to build that brand. All right. So um, I wish I knew that you're going to ask me this question. I have a news article from my uh, college newspaper, so my college town newspaper, and it's me in my dorm room, and it's me being on Facebook and MySpace, and I was so cool because I had both, and it was like, the future is here, and it was me on social media, um, so I mean, I started out just having a page because I was in college, it was a cool thing to do. Um, but again, I had eight people in my sphere of influence. Um, I was writing letters to strangers. I was freaking out. Um, and I just got on social media. I started a home sweet Heidi. That's the name of my team. Home sweet yeah. Heidi Facebook page. Um, I later started an Instagram page once that came around. Um, LinkedIn has been amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but what I do is I just update people, people, people like real estate. That's mm -hmm. why Bravo and HGTV work with all these like real estate shows. It's interesting to people. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I'm just myself on it. Um, but I, I post at least twice a week. Yeah. Um, it's important people. You need to be top of mind. The moment that somebody thinks I want to buy a house, I want them to think Heidi. That's right. So, um, but yeah, so really just college, it was just feet in the water, doing it for yeah. fun. Yeah. And now it's business. And last year we closed 30% of our business was closed from social media. Mm. And I'm not talking about like, you know, my buddy who I also know from somewhere else. I'm talking about strangers, people that don't know us from social media, reaching out to us, hiring us. And look, the cool thing about social media is people think that they know me mm -hmm. because they yeah. see me. Right. When I go in, I'm not being interviewed. Mm -hmm. People aren't asking weird questions like, 
well, how often do you get fired? You know, like, like this yeah. question's like, well, I don't know. Are you going to fire me? <laughs> what's, gonna, <laughs> what's happening? Um, I have the job. If they call me, I have the job because they automatically trust me because I'm myself. Um, I keep in touch with them often, even though they're following me. Um, but it is, I'm excited to see what 2021 is going to bring with our social media. If we did that, because the year before we did 20%. Mm. Last year we did 30%. So can we do 40% this year? Hey, so this is what's cool. So how did, I mean, how did you get started? What did that look like when you started to build your audience? Um, was it just the consistency or were there certain things you did to build the audience? Oh, I got started so rocky. Um, I mean, I was really just Googling the word home or like houses with a red door. Yeah. <laughs> I'd just like make posts and I'd get like three likes. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was doing it. Mm -hmm. And so little by little, none of this is overnight. None of this is, you know, I don't have a rich daddy, you know, mm -hmm. I, I didn't used to do this as a job. I right. just did it and I figured it out. Um, blood, sweat, and tequila. <laughs> but, yeah. um, but it, uh, social media has been really cool because I've met a lot of friends mm -hmm. on it. Um, I've met a lot of realtors locally that now what they do is when they list a house, they tag me in it because they hope that they have my buyer. Uh, so it's been a really amazing evolution there, but it's really raised, mm. raised our trust level, I guess yes. is the right way to say, I don't really know. No, it, it absolutely does. It helps people move. You know, if we're in the no like trust business, they get to know you initially when on there, they begin to all of a sudden they're like, well, I really like Heidi. I mean, she's got, I mean, this is, she's got our energy. This is what we like. And then all of a sudden it moves to the trust because they start seeing you having success with other clients. I've seen some of your posts where you've got, where it's talking about those people and how you help them, how it's talking and telling the story of those folks. And so all of a sudden now, the second they come to you, yeah, they feel like they know you because they've walked with you through listings. They've walked with you through transactions. They've met your friends that, 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 that were your clients have now become friends that can't, that are just gushing over you and the whole team. So it's absolutely that way. You brought up a good point though. This is something I always tell people. I had an agent sitting across from me yesterday that said, and I was like, you will kill on Instagram right now. You should be doing, and this is not, you know, and so I, I don't want to go through the shame of only having a couple people like something about I post it. I said, it happens for everybody. You don't get to a thousand likes or a hundred likes or 50 likes without those first one or two that you do. Right. It will be that way. You're right. And I'm pulling up my Instagram right now because we started on Instagram way too late. It was, I, I can't believe we didn't do it sooner. Um, but I want to see what my first post was because it wasn't good. And I bet I got like three likes, but I don't care about likes. Right. I care about being seen. And if anybody's like my husband, he will go on and, and doesn't like anything because um, he's just scrolling. So I don't really care about likes. I care about business. And yeah. so if he's reaching out to me, I'm doing something right. Um, but yeah, our, our social media, we originally started it as like, it's Raleigh and it's the weekend. What's going on? Not mm -hmm. so much about houses. And then right. yes. <laughs> no, it's all about real estate. Yeah. Let me ask you this also, because obviously, you know, this comes down to um, y'all do some really great stuff as far as um, video, as far as visually with photos. Um, you know, nobody starts at that level. How did that start? And what does it evolve to now as far as visually your stuff is just stunning. I mean, so what, what did it, how did it start? And now what does it look like? Uh, thank you. So when I was in college, funny story, I went, I used to date a guy that was deaf in high school. And so I just got really big into the deaf community, which is maybe why I talk with my hands so much. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to this specific college because it had a major for the deaf and hard of hearing. And I was like being a teacher and I was like, oh, great. This is, this is what I know. This is what I'll do. I get there and I, I'm in it for, I'm in the program for a year and a half my college advisor, I guess that's who it is, who like helps you pick out your classes. She makes a joke to me and she says, Heidi, I'm surprised this is what you want to do with your major because you talk a lot. And I laughed and I was like, you're funny, you're funny. And I got back to my dorm room and I felt like somebody punched me in the gut. Mm. I was completely breathless. And I was like, I've been here for a year and a half and mm. I'm studying something I don't want to do. Right. Mm. So this is coming from a place of failure. Right. Just like my real estate story. Um, and I went to the admissions department or wherever you're changing your major. I don't know what it's called. 
And I was like, Hey, I, I'm Heidi. Uh, can I please change my major? And they're like, sure. What do you want? And I was like, would well, you have a list? Like I had no thought here. Okay. This is blind faith. And, um, I looked at the stuff and I was like, well, communications. Okay, cool. Uh, journalism. My aunt's a journalist. That could be cool. Great. Uh, video broadcasting. All right, cool. And I turn it into the lady and she goes, Oh, you want to be a news anchor? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> <That's> exactly <laughs> yeah what I want. thanks for asking. I certainly do. So um, I ended up double majoring in journalism and video broadcast production, which gave me a really great platform to practice on. And so video is very easy for me. I'm very comfortable in front of the camera. Um, so when it came to real estate, why not use your strengths, right? Like I know, I know what my strengths are. I know what my weaknesses are. Right. And so being on video, I try to do that at least twice a week. Um, but we were really blessed. One of our dear friends reached out to us and said, Hey, I've got somebody. She's a videographer. She's up and coming. Do you want to hire her for a project? And I was like, sure. Yeah. So she reached out to me. She's like, look, I'm just trying to pull, uh, build my portfolio. I'll do the first one for you for a couple hundred bucks. Let's just see if we like each other. And I was like, perfect. Well, Jimmy, I ended up hiring her last month. She's now on the Home Sweet Heidi payroll. Um, she is outstanding and she's brilliant and she elevates us. Mm -hmm. And I believe that I am my product. Mm -hmm. So if I look that good for a bit, not I look that good, but the videos look that good, you better believe how good I'm negotiating. You better believe how good I'm servicing my clients everything matters. Yes. How you don't go to a client's house wearing sweatpants, right? Like you go and you show up and every time that I am putting anything out there, I want it to be done with class and I want it to be done with like the highest amount of um, quality. Yeah. Also people rarely, rarely question how much I charge mm -hmm. because they see what I put out. Mm -hmm. So they don't really care as much about. Absolutely. I know, you know, and, and we were out to give some other people some ideas. I mean, we both got the mutual friend, Kristen um, Nelson, that she just uses her iPhone, you know, and she always has, and it's, and it's, she's being her. You yeah. have to play to your strength. That's her personality just comes through. It doesn't matter if she's got an iPhone or whatever. Yeah. You and I, I've got, we've got a videographer. What yeah. we've done and the way we started for those people that are trying to figure it out is I would just say, take action, but yeah. just do just it. Like you, we went and found um, a, we actually did an internship program over a summer where we went to uh, closest school to us, major college, um, which was Florida State University. We found two people that were very good at videography, brought them in. They got an internship with Berkshire Hathaway on their resume and they got at $10 an hour, we get enough content shooting that and they got to live at the beach i mean they, who didn't want that you know well, and so they they literally we shot in we just shot things we ended up hiring one of them as a videographer when he graduated we've also now got one that is working with us that's we bumped it up we're paying a full to 15 dollars an hour you know for somebody that's extremely talented you know and and he wants to learn how to do real estate so he's learning how to do real estate while he's adding value to us yep. and it's a two-way street. Um, the undervalued thing also is every single high school and middle school right now has a morning show where kids have learned how to use cameras and video. It doesn't have to be grand. Those kids are looking for community service. They're looking for summer jobs. They're looking for all these things. I'm, it's, it's, it's out there to do. Um, I just, I'm like you, just, just do it. That's where the value and what you're talking about. Where are people understanding who you are and already know you? It's through the video. Sure. And I do 95% of my stuff on my iPhone. Yeah. So um, I've got a tripod here. I have a tripod in my car. So in case if I'm out somewhere and I want to do it real quick, I mean, what is that? 20 bucks off of yeah. Amazon, yeah. put it on your wish list, ask for it for a birthday present, whatever. Um, that it's to not do, I can't understand why you wouldn't want to do it. Some people don't like to look at themselves on video. Mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. And for that, what I say is practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes you comfortable. That's right. Just try it. Just do it. The worst thing that happens is you don't watch your video for a second time. Mm -hmm. Like maybe you just publish it, but you yeah. know what? You're getting eyes on you. And those eyes, if they weren't on you, they'd be calling somebody else. Right. So that's where you get to have a heart to heart with yourself of like, how much do I want to succeed? Mm -hmm. And if video isn't your thing, then maybe you take really beautiful pictures or like maybe you're an amazing storyteller and you can do a beautiful blog series. Whatever you want to do, just lean into your strengths because 
there's enough business out there that if you're just sitting there and complaining, it's, we we live in such an abundant situation. I, I tell everybody they don't. I've been doing this, you know, because I'm the old guy, I guess. Now I've been doing this 27 years. Over half of my life, I've been in real estate. I've never been more excited about the opportunities that are there for people that will take action in real estate right now. You know what I I really appreciate about that you and the, the entire team does also is some of these unique things, things that kind of set you apart, do a little different. Let's talk about some of that marketing, some of the things everybody's looking for listings now. What are y'all doing to take advantage of these listings that are selling so fast, which it's great they're selling so fast, but it's also bad they're selling so fast because then we don't have inventory. What are you guys doing? Uh, first of all, I don't think that Joe Public knows that houses are selling so fast and it's because we don't have enough. Right. Mm -hmm. So tell them, right? <laughs> like that's our job. We need to tell them because right now we're filming this in January. Um, traditionally in my area, a slow time. Mm -hmm. It is not slow. It is slow in real estate right now. Mm -hmm. So most people don't know that. So most people are gearing up for the spring. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? All the listings that are gearing up for the spring, so are the buyers. Yes. So why don't you get out there now so that you're not competing against 20 other offers. You're just competing against seven. Mm -hmm. um, so again, that's what we're doing. Uh, on our team, the way that we have it, I don't know if you know what a gecko board is, but it's a mm -hmm. TV and it's got, you know, stuff listed. So this is ours. Woo! over there um but we have all the houses that we're marketing soon mm -hmm. and also all of our buyers on there so we get to play matchmaker mm -hmm. in 2020 we had a beautiful um opportunity gosh i don't know how many times to just match before they even hit the market right. and the success that we got from that was amazing everybody was happy we did a really great job with it um so that's always fun and unique um, but even when I'm talking to buyers or sellers, I make sure I mention that because if they're hiring somebody else that isn't doing that, that's it. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's a great way for somebody to select you is to kind of lead with that doubt. Like, you know, what's special about working with the home sweet Heidi team is you get first dibs on our listings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but also, um, uh, again, back to social media, because that's, yeah. That's the main part. Um, yeah. I've got other realtors that just slide in my DMs and they say, Hey, Heidi, you know, I'm looking for this. What do you have? Yeah. And, and then that gives me the opportunity to say, Hey, guys, there's a buyer looking for this. Who knows somebody that's selling a house exactly. that looks like this? Exactly. It's just, yeah. we're just asking for opportunities. Yeah. I, I will say this too, Heidi. I, we were, I went over this yesterday in our market, our inventory, every single week, it continues to get smaller and smaller as far as the homes that are for sale. But when we look and we do a deep dive on the market, in actuality, the transaction numbers are still going up. And they're still, you know, so you would think, oh, well, there's less houses to sell. Transaction numbers have to come down. But here's what's happening is, is people like you, the good agents are putting deals together before they actually even hit the MLS. So the inventory continues to do that. In reality, for the good agents, the agents that are willing to make the calls, be the matchmaker, really find that, turn some stones over. When somebody says they want to live in that neighborhood, start calling people in that neighborhood. Yes, yes. yes. All of a sudden now, what's happening is, is this is the opportunity of a lifetime for great agents to shine like never before for our clients where you're, you are different, you know? So Heidi, one of the things I love is, is that obviously things are not staying on the market long and that gives us less time to expose our, or give ourselves an opportunity to market ourselves with a listing. So how are you overcoming that? Because obviously when we have these times where it's like, it's an object, it's something we're having to overcome. It does create opportunity. What are you guys doing? So we are trying to, you said the word opportunity, any yeah. opportunity we can have to grab eyes and listings, we're after it. So I got these signs made. Oh, it's and, so good. Yeah. And notice it's only one. There's not, we used to have two because like back in the day, remember when houses would be on the, on the uh, market for more than nine days. Um, so anyway, we got these and it's, we got our home sweet Heidi logo right there. We put that right in the yard next to, um, well, we used to put sold signs up. Instead, now what we do is we have our riders that have our info. This is now our sold sign. That's because great. this gets so much attention. People call us. My friends will text pictures of it. Um, actually, we did a giveaway a couple months ago where if you saw one of those, you'd get a Keurig machine. Um, and people are just like doing selfies next to them. Um, and they're hot pink, which is our color. So it really stands out. But when people see that, it grabs attention. And we get neighbors that call us and say, Hey, I saw it sold in two days. You know, did you underprice it? Mm -hmm. 
It's like, well, actually, no, we pushed the pricing, but we got this and they waived appraisal and blah, 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 blah. Oh, well, that's interesting. And then that's my opportunity to say, you know, we'd love to talk to you if you're interested in selling or even if you're not interested in selling, can I just give you an update on how much your home is worth? Right. right. The opportunities are out there. You just have to go the extra mile to grab them. Yeah. Yeah. So great. So I love the fact we do it, um, you know, not as technical as you do, but we will have our board and we call it our next 10. It's our next 10 listings, our next 10 buyers. And then we have on the other is, is our 10 biggest referral sources. We try to keep it like you're doing in front of us at all times so that we have the opportunity where those people stay top of mind. And we want to make sure that we've touched each of them in some way, shape or form at least every couple, three days, if these are our hottest prospects that are ready to do something. So I love what you're doing there and organizing that. Listen, there was a point where you had to get to a point where you're like, you know what, I can't do this on my own, or maybe my my dream is bigger than just me. How did you decide to, to, um, to move into a team situation? And what was that first hire you made in the team situation? Oh, my first hire. All right. So I have a five and a three-year-old, as you know. Uh, when I had my five-year-old, I just referred out everything. I don't know. I didn't have anybody to tell me not to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, with my three-year-old, when I was pregnant with her, I reached out to my broker in charge and I said, Hey, you know, I want to have somebody that can support me when I'm on maternity leave or whatever we want to call it in real estate. And, uh, she was like, well, look, we've got this new gal. She just started. She doesn't really know much, but she's got her license. I was like, great, cool. She came in, I interviewed her. I offered her the job on the spot. Mm. Why? My gut told me to. Mm. And I was like, you know, I'm going to pay you hourly. And, you know, I just need you as an assistant. And she said, can I ask you a question? I said, sure. What's up? She said, can I be on the team? Mm. Okay, cool. So five minutes, like loose leaf paper. Like, okay, Renee Shank is on the Home Sweet Heidi team, right? And uh, now she's been with me for four years. She's been a full-time realtor and my assistant. And she's always sold like four or five homes a year. Last year, she sold 12 homes. Next year, she's going to sell 20. So it's just like, or this year, she's going to sell 20. So it's just like, it it came out of, hey, I'm going to have a baby. This is what I've got to do. Even if I wasn't having a baby, would I have delayed starting the team? Sure, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, But I had my second team hire three months after I hired Renee. And it just was a forward momentum. And it was mine to lose. Mm -hmm. So I just had to go after it and get it. Um, If anybody out here is thinking about starting a team and like, well, yeah, but am I ready? Am I not? One, make sure you have the right person. Mm -hmm. And two, believe in yourself. Because the only thing that's in your head right now is doubt. And if you, if your clients love you, if you're doing the right thing, you've got stuff coming in, maybe you're not giving that person leads. Yeah, That's yeah. okay. Not all teams are lead based. I give my, my team some leads, but I'm also teaching them how to fish and like, Hey, this is what I'm doing. You should do this too. Um, so maybe you can be a mentor for somebody that's on your team, but you have to value yourself. And um, yeah, that was four years ago. And now we have five team members and it's, it's bigger, it's bigger than the transaction. It's, it's the it's relationship. relationship. I mean, th- this is the beauty I think some people don't realize too is, is somebody poured into you. The, uh, the best way to honor that is to pour into somebody else. I, I believe it's the natural progression. Now, we've got some agents that are with us that our average sales price is so high that they have a, an assistant and it's them and their volume so high. But the typical person that is in a situation where they have been poured into all that knowledge you've gotten, all those times that you had that doubt and you overcame it, all those rough transactions, that doesn't need to go to waste. And the best way you can help with that is, is to pour into somebody else. And I'll tell you, because I know your heart and I know where I'm coming from, why I love doing this kind of thing is is that somebody did this for us. I mean, this is, it is just, it is in our human nature. We want to help other people. And this is a way through a team for you to pour into people out of the overflow of what everybody poured into you, which is such a beautiful picture. So it's perfect. And now I'm on the national rethink council. Yes. And so that is for people that don't know, I mean, do you want to talk about it? Yes, please go into it. It's so powerful. It powerful is the perfect word. So I got the golden ticket. And what I mean by that is I went to the explosion conference in 2019 I went because my broker in charge said, hey, Heidi, you should go. And I was like, cool. I listened to everything he says. So I booked a ticket. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know a soul. Um, I walk in. I mean, you know, you know, Andy Blake. 
Yes. Mm-hmm. Meet Andy Blake. We become buds right off the stop, the beginning. So um, he's telling me, like, he, we're just talking and throwing around ideas. He was like, oh, you should be on the Rethink Council. And I was like, I don't know what that is. Um, so he was explaining it to me. He was like, look, it's, it's top producers across the nation. They're millennials. They're out there hustling. They're making it happen. And it's bringing those folks together and having a mastermind. Mm-hmm. And I was like, how do I, how do, I do that? <laughs> Because, I mean, for me, I never had a friend in real estate because all my real estate friends were my competitors locally. Mm -hmm. So now I could ask somebody else, hey, I'm doing this. It's not working. What do you think? Um, So anyway, I got the golden ticket, as I call it. And I started on the National Rethink Council last year. So January of 2020. Um, We've had one meeting so far because everything else got shut down. Mm -hmm. Um, but these people are my dear friends. We went through quarantine via zoom and text chain. Um, they are a wealth of knowledge. They have poured so much into me and inspired me in so many ways. And it's really just swapping ideas of what's working in different markets. Um, so for those people watching in Florida, if you see something on my social media and you want to steal it, please do. Cause yeah. maybe I stole it from somebody else who knows. Um, but it's, I just feel like we're all better together. Mm. And having that powerful mastermind has been such a blessing in my life. And I'm so grateful for them. I will never be the same mm-hmm. as before. Yeah. And I'll, I'll say this. A lot of people, Heidi, they'll, they'll say, well, gosh, I wish I had that, but I don't have access to that. I will tell you from experience, because I didn't have that opportunity when I was, and I actually went out and created it myself. So listen, if you're going to at some point, we're going back to conferences, right? Good gosh. I mean, uh, you know, and I'm going to be at every one of them when they start. Every one of them. I mean, get there a day early. I'm staying a day late. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. I know. And so listen, use those times. Just like what you said, you met someone. Build your own network. Um, you can do it now with Zoom. Literally, I'll promise you, if you'll reach out to agents that are on the rise, if you're on the rise, for instance, or that is a top producer and you're a top producer and you said, listen, I got about seven or eight of us. I want us to just to talk about what's going on with listings. Could you jump on a Zoom call? You can create this so fast. People are begging you to do this. And let me say this, the best way to know what it and the get the value out of it is host the party. I mean, parties are fun. But let me just tell you something. If you host the party, it's even better. I would highly encourage if they don't have access to this to really lean on that. Listen, Heidi, this has been tremendous. You have dropped so many great things for people. I mean, literally, they're going to walk away from this with actionable ideas. And so I really want to, I want to thank you for that. How do people get in touch with you? How do they find you on social media to connect with you? If they've got a referral that they need to send up that way, how do they do that? Send me all of your referrals. I love paying referral fees, remember? Um, so I am on Facebook. It's at Home Sweet Heidi. On Instagram, it's at Home Sweet Heidi. My full name is Heidi Harris. So if you want to just friend me on any of those accounts, that's cool too. Uh, but my email address is Heidi, H-E-I-D-I, at homesweetheidi.com. And my phone number is 919-946-3292. And we'll take awesome care of your clients. <laughs> you will. I know you will. Um, <laughs> if you haven't had a chance, I would highly encourage you. Follow Heidi. She's doing it the right way. Literally, she just gave you permission to copy and just basically rip and duplicate what she's doing. So I would highly encourage it. Take care, guys, and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah.